So welcome to another edition of Football Family Feuds. I, um, just after the match, I did a recording. I was going to put it out, but it's way too emotional. And as I was editing it, I just, there was too many uh, mistakes in it due to me being angry, upset, and very, very annoyed at the team. So um, I'm going to redo it. Um, a bit more measured now. I've calmed down a bit. So um, I just don't get this team. We constantly shoot ourselves in the foot. Time and time again, we do this against these rubbish teams. And I'm not going to dis um, disrespect Newcastle, but why do we always... It's the same old story against these defensive low block teams. We cannot break them down. And it's known in the fact that we can't break them down. It's just that they have one shot or two shots on target and they score. This is becoming a habit now, a bad habit that we need to shake if we want to get top four. We're not going to be getting top four if we carry on with this pattern. It's not acceptable, I'm sorry. Totally unacceptable, you know. Fair play to Newcastle, they defended well. And why do all these teams, uh, Burnley had the perfect defensive game against us. Newcastle, the perfect defensive game against us. Southampton, the perfect defensive game against us. Newcastle, the other day, when they played against Manchester United, loads of individual errors. They played against Leicester. Again, lots of individual errors. Today, not one of their defenders put a foot wrong. But, you know, these teams, I, I saw people moaning about the way they set up but they are in a dogfight okay they're 13 but they're close to the bottom of the league so this is the way they have to set up it's, it's, it's not up to them to entertain they need to get the points and the game plan works Steve Bruce can turn around and say yeah I got the result first time he's ever beaten Lampard in, in, in managerial football as well so we're breaking all sorts of unwanted records at the moment um, it, as I said we are too predictable when it comes to playing against low block teams. Our play is so predictable. Pass, pass, pass sideways, 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 then get it to the, uh, the winger or the, the fullback, crosses a ball and it's just cleared. We do that all the time. So all they do is put a lot of guys in the middle and prevent the crosses from coming in. The only guy is is was potent today of any crosses was Rhys James, um, and once again he was probably our our shining light. Apart from that, all the others were just mediocre. So let's start from the beginning. I'm going to start with Frank, and he doesn't get away from any of the criticism. Because last week in my match review, I mentioned the fact that the reason why we were able to break down Burnley effectively was because of our setup. We had two attack-minded midfielders in the midfield three. We, okay, we had Barkley and we had um, Mount. Mount today was average. But what you do when you have two attacking midfielders, it allows us that opportunity to um, play between the lines, it gives us more of an attacking threat. It gives us a little bit more creativity. Okay, Barkley and Mount may not be the best, but it creates, it gives them, a, a poses a question to the defending team. Um, Kante and Georgina together. You know, Georgina, Kante, a great ball winner, but when it comes to providing that killer pass, he hasn't got it. Georgina, again, He's good at dictating from a, a deeper position, but when it comes to assists, he did one good assist, like, was it against, uh, I can't remember where Tammy Abraham scored. Um, but apart from that, he doesn't give you that threat in the final third as well. He doesn't put enough killer passes through. Mason Mount, as I mentioned already today, he was average. I remember once, one time he had a ball Instead of squaring it to uh, James, who was in acres of space, he tried to play that killer pass into uh, Abraham and the ball got cut out. The one time he did do a good pass, that was at the start of the second half, Willian fluffs his line. You know, Willian, you're called upon on these big games. Somebody who can make a difference in tight games. Whenever there's a tight game, Willian does not uh, turn up. 
Okay, he did it once against Tottenham this season, but most of the time he doesn't turn up. You know, we needed a goal, he snatches at it. You know, he's got to be hitting the target from there. Um, as I said, we go to the lineup, as I said before. We need, as I said, two attacking midfielders in that lineup. Asper de Quetta today on the left wasn't working. Just like he did against Arsenal, Frank should have made that change earlier because what Asper de Quetta was doing, he was cutting in onto his right foot and because of that, the play kept getting broken down. You know, Newcastle can go back, get organised. When Emerson came on in the second half due, due to that injury for, for Rhys James, you saw him, all of a sudden, you've got a fullback who's bombing down the line. You know, Asper Quetta wasn't giving us that. So we had, if, if we had, at the beginning, James one side bombing down the line, Emerson the other side bombing down the line, getting in crosses, that would have posed a different question for Newcastle. But it was too easy down that side. With him not functioning, with Willian having an off day, it wasn't working. So, Frank, against these teams, please, 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 let's be braver. And... and you know, we, we may have got a, a positive result. I call this from the first 15 minutes. With Chelsea now, you can see in the first 15, 20 minutes what the score's going to be. And I predicted this. I'm not lying. Here's the tweet that I put out in 15 minutes into the game. It just had that feel. It just had the feel of the Bournemouth, the West Ham, the Southampton. That's the feel it had. And I said to my son, I said to Zane, we could go on till next week and we're not scoring. I just couldn't see us getting a goal. Um, Newcastle didn't pose a threat. They had one header in the first half by Joe Linton that hit the post. Again, as I said, they had three attacks. One of them hit the post. One was shot wide and the other one goal. We had about 30 attacks. And out of those 30 attacks, I can't, you know, how many clear cut chances did we have? Hardly any. We had the Tammy Abraham shot which was semi-clear of the line where the goalkeeper made a good save. But apart from that, we didn't really test the goalkeeper. And furthermore, we got nobody in our team who can shoot from range. So when it's not working with the crosses, when they're blocking the crosses, we haven't got anybody who can get, get the ball and take a shot from range to test the goalkeeper. There's a guy, Bruno Fernandes, Manchester United wants him. They're haggling over the fee at the moment because... Uh, Manchester United don't want to pay over 40 million plus add-ons. Um, a sporting answer for 65, I think. Let's go in and let's get him. He's exactly what we need. A goal-scoring midfielder with a bit of creativity who can shoot from distance. That's the sort of player we need. So the people say there's no one out there in the market who can add, improve our squad. There's plenty of players. He's one of them. You know, man, you're messing about with it. Let's step in. Let's do a William. Let's not just do what we did to, to, uh, for, to, again, uh, with Tottenham when we stole William of them. Let's go and steal this boy because I reckon if we get this boy, he can make a big difference towards the second part of the season. And if you're giving him to Manchester United, you're strengthening them who are only five points behind us. I've got no faith about us getting into the top four. I've got no confidence at all because we've got no consistency. Win one, lose one. Win one, lose one. Win one, lose one. Win one, lose one. Tuesday, we've got Arsenal. Arsenal, another team fighting for their life. They were against us when we played them in the Emirates. They played two backs of four. They're more organised now. They're going to come to the Stamford Bridge a lot more organised. We're going to struggle against them as well. It's going to be the same story. So... If we don't get our act together, that's the way it's going to be. Teams are just going to come, apart from, obviously, the teams like Liverpool and teams like that. Teams are going to, even Tottenham, Jose Mourinho is going to do the same thing. Two banks of four, defend, frustrate us, hit us on the break. That's the way teams play us again. And we've got no answers for those teams. So we need to improve, guys. We just need to, you know, we need to get bodies in. We need to get somebody in to challenge Tammy Abraham, because Tammy Abraham... Good as he is, sometimes in these tight games, needs to be more lethal. You know, he missed a couple of chances. One, he was unlucky when he didn't get his foot in. But in these great tight games, we need a striker who's going to make the difference. I haven't got that. It's disappointing, guys. Today was a massive opportunity for us. Tottenham drew nil-nil with Watford. 
Arsenal drew with Sheffield United. Although well, Arsenal are not really in in the peck and, uh, in in it, the mix at the moment. Sheffield United, sorry, Sheffield United drew with Arsenal. I should say the other way around. So Sheffield United drew. So they're a bigger threat to us than Arsenal at the moment. Um, and Manchester United play Liverpool tomorrow in a game which they probably will lose. So we could have had an eight point gap. And at this point in the season, eight points is a big gap to have. But yet, Tottenham have actually gained a point on us today. It's not good enough, guys. Not good enough. Um, please, we, uh, we've got 14 more days left in the window. We need reinforcements. Or 13 days. We need reinforcements. We need them now. Because the guys who are here now have proved now they're not good enough to maintain a top four place and it's not a knee-jerk reaction because had we just lost the game against maybe a West Ham then I'll say okay but we've lost four teams now four teams who play the same way and it's a worrying trend now you know it's we can't break them down hit on the sucker punch how many times have we got hit by on the sucker all the time you know it's a trend now. It's not a it's not a blip. This is a trend. And this trend is gonna continue unless we get new personnel in. As I said, we need a 10, a number 10, who is going to give us that creative spark, is gonna unlock doors for stubborn against stubborn defences. We don't get that, then this is just gonna. I'm just going to be repeating myself time and time again when I do the um, match reviews. So there you go, guys. We got we could, we need to pick ourselves up for that game on Tuesday because that is now a must-win game after this one, or or in trouble. I said I can't. I've got no confidence of us getting top four this season. None. You know the other teams are trying their best, like they did last season, to get us into the top four with their results, but. Um, I can't see it. I can't see it. I really can't see it. Um, I hope I'm proved wrong. So let me know what you think below, guys. Comment below and let me know what we can do to improve this. Do you think it's Frank's fault? Do you think it's the player's fault? Who do you think we can bring in that can make the difference, that can give us that push in the final, for the final third of the season to get us into that top four spot? I'd, just, I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions. Okay, until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Um, so, win, lose, draw, we're still uh, Chelsea supporters. So, win or lose out the blues. So, take care, guys. Bye bye.